Welcome to Maybe Someday. This is the space elevator. fun little technique I've been playing with for the last couple weeks and it's super easy to do. I'm calling it the space elevator effect because of the way it goes up and down quickly like an elevator and the actual space elevator is probably not going to be a thing anytime soon so we'll just borrow it for now. All you need to pull it off is a drone that shoots stills so in this case I'm using the Mavic 2 Pro um, because it's obviously compact and tiny fits in my backpack and it shoots amazing quality stills. I like to pre-scout stuff on Google Earth so that when I look out the window and the conditions are good, I can head straight to a spot and have a game plan in mind. I found that it helps if you pick a location that has something the viewer can really focus on. So for today, I'm going to use this building here because in a previous attempt, I noticed that it naturally stands out against the rest of the city at the time of night that I'll be shooting. As for settings on the drone, I find that if you shoot raw stills, you get a lot more flexibility in post and more resolution, obviously, than if you shoot video. The only downside is that you can only shoot a photo every 5 seconds with the Mavic 2 Pro, but it does give you just enough to kind of put a sequence together for this. I've also found these look really cool if you shoot it at dusk, as the sun is going down and the city lights are coming on, and over the course of the flight you see a lot of change in the lights. So I'm actually using the shutter priority setting and then just letting the camera do the rest of the work. The Mavic 2 Pro actually does an amazing job of gradually adjusting the aperture so you get a smooth transition from bright to dark. The starting point for the drone just needs to be high enough that you can pinpoint an object to sort of use as a tracking point, somewhere in like the medium distance or so. So in this case I'm going to use this building here near the center as a constant, and then I'll either use my center marker or I'll drag my histogram window over to it to kind of use it as a marker for where it is relative to the screen. Then just double check your framing and everything before you start because you don't want to be changing anything after you start your ascent. This next part is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing, and that's that you need to be rising slowly. And I'm talking really slow. So I like to plant my thumb at the base of the joystick here instead of on top of it to kind of lock it in place and get a more subtle and constant move. The speed I've found to work well is about 0.1 meters per second, so do your best to keep it at that speed until you hit your ceiling. While you're rising up, you need to be slowly making micro adjustments to your tilt as well. So see how I have my histogram window lined up on this edge here with the building? You'll want to be making slight adjustments to your tilt as you ascend to keep it at the same position in the frame. It's okay if it's a little jerky because we're going to be stabilizing it more in post, but the better job you do here, the more of a frame you'll have to work with. Once you reach your ceiling, which in Canada is 120 meters, your battery should be at about 35% or so if you did everything at the proper speed. And you should have shot between 200 and 240 photos, which is just enough to kind of put this sequence together. So once you reach that point, we'll just safely bring the drone back down and then jump on the computer. And the first thing we do on the computer is open up Lightroom and batch edit our photos. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to edit your images in this video. That comes down to you and your own style. But the advantage to shooting these as stills as opposed to video on the Mavic 2 Pro is that you have a lot more flexibility in editing and way more resolution for reframing which we'll come back to shortly. So make your adjustments, sync up all your images, and then export as full resolution JPEGs. We'll throw these in a folder called Edited Images. Next, we'll open up Premiere and toss that folder of images into our project. Right click on the top image and select New Sequence from Clip, and then drag the rest of the images onto that timeline that's been created. Set an out point at the end of the timeline, then export this as a lossless QuickTime file. I like to pop it in a folder called Working Exports, and we'll name it Image Sequence. Now let's pop open After Effects and import that clip into the project. Right click on it and select New Comp from Selection. Then go over to the Tracker panel on the right here and select Stabilize Motion. This little box will appear in the middle of the comp and we'll drag that over to the object in the frame that we were using as our marker when we were shooting. In this case, the building here. Zoom in a bunch so you can fine tune things and then drag the corners of this box to totally surround a high contrast area. In this case, I'm going to use these windows. When it's a short clip like this, I like to tap through it frame by frame using this button here, so if it jumps around, I can catch it right away and adjust it accordingly. When you get to the end of the sequence, apply the tracker, and what it's basically doing here is ensuring that this part of the image never moves in the frame, which results in this strangely satisfying kind of stabilization. Export this as a lossless video so we can bring it back into Premiere for the rest. 
And before you go any further, you're going to want to find a song to kind of pace your edit to. So I've been using Musicbed to license music for years now, so when they came out with their subscription service recently, it was a no-brainer. For personal stuff like Instagram and YouTube, it's only 9 bucks a month, which is super competitive with other services, and you get access to their library of incredible music that crosses all kinds of genres. If you use the link in the description below, you'll get a 30-day free trial, and it helps support this channel. In this case, I'm going to use the song Sunset Drive by Virgil Arles, so I'll download this and pop it into Premiere along with the stabilized clip we just exported from After Effects. One of the biggest tricks to making a perfect loop video is finding a song that suits it well. If there is an actual formula to this, I don't know what it is, but I do know it when I hear it. It's kind of that point where you hear the song looping over and over again and you feel like you want to jump in and lay down a verse even though you're definitely not a rapper. Um, I could probably do a whole video on finding music for looping videos, but for now I'll just stress that you want people to get lost in the loop and watch it over and over again, so you really need to ride that line of super catchy but not quite enough to be annoying. So once we figured out the part of the song that we're going to use for the loop, let's go ahead and make a new sequence from that stabilized clip and then toss the song on there as well. We'll take the song and chop it so we're only getting one of the bars. So usually you can do it from a snare hit to a snare hit or a snare hit to a bass drum hit. This is definitely a feel thing. Now right click on the video clip and select speed duration and set this to 1000%. Then right click on it again and select show clip keyframes, time remapping, speed. Go ahead and add a keyframe near the beginning and end and then drag this middle section up to around 200% for starters and then these sections at the beginning and end to 10%. Grab onto these little tail thingies here and give this a nice easy bezier curve on each side. This is what we call speed ramping and Premiere hates it, but this is a little workaround that I came up with to get past the 1000% limit. This next little bit is just a bit of trial and error, so play with the speed of the middle of the clip as well as the ramps on either end until your clip is pretty close to lined up with that little chunk of music that you set aside here. Again, there really isn't a science to it, you just have to kind of mess around a bunch with it until it feels right. Resist the urge to rush this part and just keep playing around with it until it's perfect. Once it's there, we'll right click on this clip and nest it so that we can do other stuff to it now. Copy it and paste it at the end so you have two back to back, then right click on the second one and select speed duration and check off reverse speed. Okay, we're almost done. We have a loop and we could quit here, but I think the part that really messes with people is the zoom in, zoom out thing that we throw in. So we'll show you how to do that. So let's select these two clips and paste another batch beside them. With this clip selected, make sure the timeline marker is at the beginning of that clip, then go to your effect controls and hit the keyframe button beside scale. Then jump to the end of that clip and set your scale to 200%. You might need to adjust your position and rotation as well, so you can either do that before or after, uh, but it depends on how you frame things up. Right click on these new keyframes, set them to continuous bezier, and then play around with the curve until it does something you're happy with. You'll have to basically do the opposite of that move to the next clip so that by the end of it, it's back at the beginning and ready to loop. Once I have these four clips in a place I'm happy with, I like to nest them together and toss on a warp stabilizer just to even out any kinks. Sometimes it doesn't need it, but it really doesn't hurt to see how it affects things. So I'll always go for the advanced detailed analysis and then I'll usually set the smoothness to around 2-3%. to You might need to do some little tweaks from here or you might decide that it didn't work at all and you need to reshoot. Whatever the case is, don't settle, make it perfect, even if it means that this was just a trial run and a learning experience and you have to reshoot. That's it for this one. I know we covered a lot in a very short amount of time, but if you managed to get something out of it and make something cool, I would love it if you tagged me or use the hashtag space elevator effect um, so I can see what you came up with. I've got links to all the gear and services that I use in the description below, and if you're thinking about getting any of those anyway, then if you use those links, it helps support the channel and I really appreciate it. And otherwise, that's it for me, so go make something cool, and I'll see you on the next one, which there will be a next one, I promise.